Again, uh, doing some testing on the on the uh, controller, and uh, I've gone ahead and I've built up the new um, hardware here. This is the final version um, of the IGBT based uh, power section, and uh, just give a quick tour here. Uh, the top plate here, as you can see, holds these caps. These are the DC bus caps. And they're essentially held on to a uh, piece of um, standard FR4 copper clad PCB board. Um, that's been basically just cut out to, to fit all of the various um, bus bars uh, and power taps that go in here. And uh, I cut out the sections here of copper um, that we don't need, and I did that with just a simple, um, just a simple end mill and just a normal uh, pillar drill there, and uh, just did it, uh, just did it out um, freehand, and uh, that seemed to work well. And the caps are quite held in sturdily here and it's it's very easy to take this apart as well now um, under the plate we have three copper bus bars and they're formed from 20 by 10 um, copper bar and they bring the power to and from the switch and the freewheeling diode that are um, under the capacitor plate here. The whole thing then is bolted down onto this uh, 12 mil thick um, aluminium heat sink here and uh, uh, this whole thing will be put it will be put into a steel box that I have. So um, this is just some uh, bench tests here again this is our control board and uh, on this occasion I have a current sensor here on the um, on the um, motor side and that means that our speed control um, will be proportional to current um, which is supposed to ensure that the car doesn't spin the tires essentially so um, we'll see how that how that operates now in a few seconds and um, again our throttle uh, control here is via the BMW um, throttle body and we're just uh, tapped into the to the throttle position sensor here uh, it's a very handy feature of this controller is that it can uh, take in any kind of throttle sensor. So it's uh, quite a handy setup. Okay, so we're we're essentially all set to go. Again, I've got just uh, 12 volt um, traction power here and a small SLA there just to power up the controller itself. So we're set up here, the PC again, we're set up here just to graph data and uh, as I say on this occasion I seem to have taken out the problem of the jerky starting. So I'll just go ahead there and if I can get this silly camcorder cable out of the way. I'll just go ahead and I'll give it a little bit of power there and you should see a smooth uh, take up of drive starting to turn now, it's gentle, there's no kind of jerkiness in it and I can advance the throttle nice and slowly we go up to full speed and slow back down again and up again so as you can see the motor isn't jerking or kicking half as much as it did the previous time 
um, and it just takes, I'll just, I'm going to take a small application of throttle here. I'll just show you the spindle in the center there just to give you an idea of kind of how much uh, how much turning I'm actually doing just for the application. There's you hear the motor spinning up there like that. There we go. And again, uh, we're getting far more data here now on the PC as well because we've got the current feedback. Uh, you can see the current feedback here. This essentially tells us um, how much power the motor is trying to draw and then the software inside the controller varies the pulse width going to the IGBT here to control um, <coughs> to control the uh, power. So I'll just uh, so a few things here I can turn off the heat sink because I haven't got the thermocouple set up on that at the minute so I'll just turn off the heat sink uh, setting there so I'll just do a quick run there now just slowly advancing my throttle you can see that uh, the motor is starting to move now very slowly at first see the PWM building up there I increase my throttle and we're up to full PWM and back down again and give her a few little pulses there so as you can see there we get our current feedback starting to work there I'll just zoom in on that while I operate the throttle here it's our battery amp, or sorry um, motor amps just the raw data coming in again there sorry for my shaking hand I've been on too many cups of coffee trying to get this thing finished so uh, this is the final production hardware now that uh, will be going for a test in the car hopefully fairly soon and uh, that's it, that's the completed control system there. Just has to go into the box with um, there's no heat build up at all. Just has to go into the box with all the other bits and pieces there and um, get a final test here before being installed in the car. So that's about it folks. Pretty successful um, setup here. Just have it set up again here, just another quick demo. <coughs> I've just got two values ticked here now. We've got the throttle and we have the current feedback. Now the throttle is in uh, red and the current feedback is, is in blue. So if I advance here, we should be able to see the throttle increase and the current starts to chase it until it gets to the desired value. You can see the current falling off as the motor accelerates. If I bring my throttle back then, the current starts to chase the throttle. If I increase, the current increases, chasing the throttle again until the two of them agree. Then if we go to full power, the current increases again and back down again and see the two of them essentially the the blue is trying to chase the red yeah see how that operates very well there if I do a sudden increase to, and see the way the graph responds to that that's the controller um, trying to keep up with the changes in throttle and hear the motor changing pitch there as it accelerates and decelerates. Okay, that's it.